recording. There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Corinne, and we are going to record a first Friday Fast 15 on making uh, Gmail less frustrating. And this will go on our YouTube channel for Northwest Regional ESD, and the playlist will be, uh, we'll make a playlist of all these first Friday uh, Fast 15. So you'll, either Jody or I, both instructional technology, will do one of these each month until May, and then we'll pick it back up again probably in the following year. What we found is Google has changed pretty drastically and probably will continue to evolve over time as we find uh, these new work ecosystems that we have that may not ever go back to what they were prior to this pandemic. So welcome. And um, like I said, I'm going to just kind of cruise through 15 minutes worth of content and then we'll stop the recording each time, um, each of these Fridays, and then you can ask your questions for 45 minutes, or hopefully you bring really good tips and tricks to, to share with other people as well. So let me just screencast and I'll kind of walk through this list that I've got. And I opened up my email. So um, this will be sort of a demonstration, but again, there's a recording. So if you want to follow along, that's great. If you want to be experimenting on your own, that's also great. This video will be available later in case you want to go back and forth and do some exploration at a different time. So the first thing that I wanted to show you that I found kind of annoying, and I just like a lot of white space in anything that I'm looking at. So I have my email set right now to a comfortable spacing up here under this gear. These are quick settings and it allows me immediately to change some things about my inbox that may or may not be a little bit frustrating. So I have mine set to comfortable, which gives me a nice cushion between messages. The default is actually even more space. So it gives you a slight more, slightly more space here. And then if you have an attachment and it really spreads it out so that you can see it right away when you open your um, messages just right in your inbox. So the other things here in quick settings that might have that might um, help in terms of frustration or just viewability in this case is you have the ability to change the theme on your email, which is really nice if you log into multiple profiles. So I know that this is my Cascade Technology email because it has this rock theme and my other inboxes have different themes on them. So it gives me a nice visual for what I'm using at the time. If you don't log into multiple e email boxes, this is not gonna be a concern for you. Um, but themes can be kind of fun too, and they change a lot. So um, it's a, a little bit of entertainment and uh, visual appeal at the same time. Um, next month, Jody is going to go over these inbox types and talk to you about priority inbox a little bit, which is what I have turned on, and it's really convenient. Um, she'll do some instruction next month, but if you want to try it out, you can do that here. And then something else that I've heard a lot of people as they shift, if you're a prior Outlook user and you've switched to Gmail, um, you can turn on a reading pane here. So that's what this is. I don't like the reading pane, so I just leave it off, but you can put it to the right of your inbox. So that's where you would see your inbox at the left side. And then you also uh, would be able to, um, I don't know what I just moved into the trash, but I was just, I accidentally clicked. Um, so you can have it, so you would read your inbox to the left, and then on the right, there would be a reading pane where you'd actually see the content of the message or you can have a reading pane below your inbox. So those are all really um, kind of different ways to visually uh, see your email, whatever's most convenient for you. The last thing in these quick settings is something you really should know about if you don't already, because I know this is something that really has frustrated people. There's something in Gmail called conversation view, and I like conversation view. It means that everything under the same subject line is going to thread together. So this message, for instance, these are all 
both um, original messages and replies to the message. I have three in here in this particular thread. When I uncheck this box, it will detach those three from each other and I would see three separate messages in my box. So just depending on what you like, I love conversation view. I wanna see fewer things in my box and I wanna know what's all related. But I do know that some people have said, oh gosh, it drives me crazy. And they just immediately uncheck this box. So all certainly good, good ways for you to manage your own productivity, your own tasks and your own time. So those are quick settings. There are lots of things in there to try. We talked about reading pain. Um, this is a really nice feature. I'm gonna go ahead and open a message. And then up here, you have a menu that says more. So it looks like three dots. And then you can create an event from a message, which is kind of nice. You will find that if you have certain settings on, Google may be creating your events for you. Like if you have an airline ticket that you've purchased and it's sitting in your inbox, then uh, with the right settings on, Google will actually grab the information from that itinerary and it'll throw it into your calendar on the right dates. You can turn that on or off. I love that feature, that kind of thing, because it does save me a lot of time. Um, ultimately, not I, I shouldn't say a lot of time. I think um, it compounds over time and the volume is less. So um, creating, you can, it just launches your calendar. It puts the event right into your calendar. It puts all of the information from the message down in your, um, the uh, not the body, but the details of the event itself. You can invite whoever you need to here. It automatically invites the person that sent the message uh, or any recipients on a message if it's one that you created, and then you can just click save. So that's kind of nice. The other things in this more menu are um, marking it as unread. Sometimes, because I use priority inbox, I like the important messages to be at the very top. And so doing unread and important is the way to, to make that happen in priority inbox. You can add a star. So this would be uh, make certain messages easier to find. Uh, the create event, which I just showed you. Um, Jody's also, also gonna go over filtering and labels in messages next week as well. So you can do that from this menu. You can also still receive mail in this particular conversation. So under this subject line, but you can mute it. So it doesn't hit your inbox. You would have to set some kind of reminder to go get it at some point during your day. Um, the other nice thing within the message itself. So that was the more um, menu. There's a little auto advance up here at the top. So I can just, this is my very, the very first message is what I clicked on in my inbox. I can just, if I wanna just get a feel for what's come in overnight or during my lunch break or something like that, I can use these arrows and it just goes through each message in, I believe in order, but since I have priority inbox turned on, it's probably just the ones that are unread and that Google has deemed important. And as a side note, the way it does, it decides whether it's important or not is, how often I read messages from these people. Um, sometimes the content of the message has to do something to do with it. Um, you can, there are lots of different ways that um, Gmail uses what you do, where you click and what you do and what you write to decide if messages are important. So these are easy ways to navigate through your messages just at the top if you just kind of wanna browse them before actually answering them. And then there are some cool send features in Gmail that I like a lot because they save me time and really take a lot of frustration out of my life. So one of the things that's important about sending messages, I just have to put someone in this spot and it likes it when I put stuff in the body and the subject line. So a couple of things about send, one is you can schedule sending a message. So I use this a lot. As a supervisor, I feel like if I'm messaging people in the middle of the night, they might want 
think that I want a response right away. So especially if you manage people, you're going to want to schedule these to send not in the middle of the night if you happen to be working or even, um, you know, checking your email by at nine o'clock at night or something you may not you may want to schedule it for the next day. So um, because we do have this love hate relationship with email. And sometimes we need that answer immediately. And we're using email instead of phone or chat and um, which is not great. I mean, we shouldn't be doing that anyway, especially in this environment where um, we may be working, where we don't have a commute, so we have lots of extra time. Um, but do feel free to use the schedule send just as it fits with your for your folks um, uh, or for your situation. So it has some typical times that you might send a message. You can schedule all your messages to go out at 8 a.m. if you want. Um, or it maybe you want it to hit the inbox at a certain time. So there are studies about how certain industries or certain people, groups of people read their emails at different times. Um, and so you may wanna to cater to that audience after a little market research. You can also customize the date and time here to schedule sending a message. So that's just the little arrow right to the right of your send button. The other cool thing is I have this turned on when um, this is blue like this, it actually sends the message and archives the old message at the same time. This is a brand new message, so it doesn't matter. But in a regular message, if I were to respond here to Lindsay, then if I did my send and archive, then it would actually send the message and then send it to my archive so I don't see it in my inbox any longer. So that's a really brilliant thing to set up. The other thing that's cool about sending a message in Gmail is when you hit send, you actually have this option and you can set it for however long you want. Mine's about 30 seconds. I can undo that send and it gives me the message back. So a lot of times I'll hit send and think, oh gosh, did I include that attachment? Or did I spell something wrong? Or shoot, I meant to also tell them this. If I figure that out within 30 seconds, I can undo that send and then add whatever I need and it hasn't hit their inbox yet. So really convenient things in sending. You can schedule, you can send an archive, or you can undo a send to make sure that the content of your message is really what you want it to be. A couple of more things um, about messages and a, another menu you should know about is you hover over your messages um, or one of your messages, you have a menu over here on the right, a lot of which we've gone over. You can archive a message from this space, which just means that it sends it out of your inbox and, and into your all messages label, which is still makes it accessible. It's not like throwing it away. It doesn't delete itself in 30 days or anything. It just puts it in sort of like Google Mail's memory so that you can pull it back up when you need it. You can just delete a message from here. You can mark this message as read, which again, priority inbox. I like my messages that are important and unread to be at the top. And so this will allow it if I've already read this message to also then, um, sorry, in this case, it says mark as read. Um, in a red message, it says mark as unread. So it's a good way to organize your mail in a way that you that matches your workflow. And then this button is, is the one I find really <laughs> useful. Um, snooze, if you click the little clock icon and snooze is the function, you can say, I want this message to pop back into my inbox, but I don't really want to see it for a while. So you can have, again, some suggested and typical times to snooze, or you can customize a specific date and time. So if you have, I know some people have extreme workflows and communication flows, you can schedule it for a time that it would be better for you to actually consume and then respond to the content of the message. And then there are just two more things I want to show you before we stop the recording. One is um, the ability to save to drive. Didn't mean to click that. I need something with an attachment. So we'll Go ahead and look at this quote from this vendor. Uh, I love when I get an attachment and I'm gonna need to save it. This is of course way at the bottom. 
you can do this with voicemails. You can do it with PDFs. You can do it with Word documents, anything that you need to store for later. It gives you two options. So here's my attachment. When I hover over the attachment, I can download it and that puts it on my computer. Or I can add it to my drive. And what I love about this is it gives me this little link here and I can actually organize it within my drive. So it automatically saves to my drive and it's in this account, this Cascade Tech account where I'm logged in. And if I have a folder or even a shared drive where I want this to go, I can organize it on the spot before I trash this message or before I archive it. So that is kind of a nice feature. Um, like I said, it automatically goes into my drive, but I can just find a new spot for it and say, move it to here and it will be where I want it to be. And I don't have to um, wonder about where it went later. So really nice feature. Um, and then there's one more thing. Nudges are something that you can turn on. And I'm going to show you, this can be, this menu can be overwhelming. So don't get overwhelmed here. Um, when I go to settings, at first I got all these quick settings. I also have this see all settings button. And this is overwhelming because it has every facet of Gmail. You can dabble in here if you want to, but as Jody and I do any trainings on Google, we'll go through these slowly, just hopefully have getting your retention and recall a little bit better when we talk about, you know, when you need this thing in six months and you can't remember where we got it, um, you'll have enough uh, vocabulary to look it up or to kind of, um, go through each of these settings and find what you're looking for. So under this general tab, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Um, all those send functions are in here that I talked about before. But nudges, um, I would, I, I can't remember if these are on by default. I have them on for both suggest re to replies and for following up. What I like about this is there's nothing in my inbox that has these right now, but I can say, yep, I really need to know when that person hasn't responded because I've crossed it off my list. Nudges are a really good way to do that. They appear in your inbox just as a little, um, you know, you'll go, wait a minute, why this message is one that I sent. Why, why is it here in my inbox? And it, you'll see to the right of the message, it says nudge. And so it tells you, hey, you've sent this message three days ago or um, five days ago, and this person hasn't responded. Do you want to ping them again? So it's a really nice thing for, I really do want it to off my task list, but I don't, I need to be able to follow up and make sure that um, there's a response generated. So those are all really nice features um, to have. I don't want to overwhelm you with that menu, but again, it's right here under settings, under the gear, quick settings, and then all settings. And um, just, you could just explore this. A lot of it is, is meant for productivity and um, they're really listening to focus groups at Google for sure. Um, and adding features kind of constantly. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. You can find this on our YouTube channel later. Thank you very much for being here or watching the video at a later time.